What is up, Alive Online? How are you guys doing? Wherever you're at, wherever you're tuning in from, whatever time zone you're tuning in from, man, we're just so glad that you're with us today. And I believe that today is going to be incredibly powerful. Lord has given me a word to share with you guys. And I want you to lean in, grab a note taker. Matter of fact, go ahead and invite somebody right now. Invite your neighbor, your coworker, your, your family member. Let them know that the word of God is coming to you guys right now. And I believe it's something that's going to um, eternally and internally change your life. For those I have not gotten the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Freeman. Um, I'm one of the pastors here at a live church, been at this church for many years, and I've had the privilege and opportunity to serve underneath Pastor Ken and Pastor Tabitha, two of the greatest leaders in the world. They have literally changed my life by just seeing their faithfulness to God, and uh, man, I just want to honor them. So thankful for them. And so I get the opportunity to oversee our next generation here at Alive, both in Gainesville and Orlando, and I'm also the, um, the ALI director. That's our Alive Leader. Institute. And uh, this is a great opportunity for any leader that says, hey, I want to grow in my leadership skills. I want to be trained and equipped and prepared for what God has called me to do. Matter of fact, we have registrations that just opened up last week. So for more information about that, you can visit our website. I'm also the king of corny jokes. So I love to start off a message with something a little funny. And uh, I got a joke for you. And guys, if you don't like my jokes, you can just like I don't know. I was going to say unsubscribe, but this isn't my channel. Pastor Ken probably wouldn't like that. But anyways, I got a joke for you, but somebody sent me this joke. And so if you don't like it, you can just blame somebody else. So here it is. Why did Jesus get kicked out of the jewelry store? Because he broke every chain. Come on, somebody. We serve a chain-breaking God. Hey, well, let's jump right into the scripture today. If you didn't watch this just because you want to hear some jokes, you watch this because you wanted to see and hear the word of God. Well, I got something for you today. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. I'm read this to you. It says, let us not get tired. Get tired. Come on, anybody got a little tired? <laughs> Maybe over the last year or so, a little tired. Let us not get tired of doing what is good. Because at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. You know, we're in this Faith Over series, and I don't know about you, but this series has been incredibly powerful for me. It has changed my view on some things, has given me faith. You know, the first message we did was faith over fear. Then we talked about faith over doubt faith over unbelief. Matter of fact, next week, we're going to be topping off this series, talking about being made for this moment. And actually, next week is our Commitment Sunday. I'm going to talk more about that later. And today, today, I get the privilege of speaking from the topic of faith over fatigue. Come on, somebody, put that in the chat. Faith over fatigue. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you right now. And Lord, we thank you for your presence that is with every single person that's watching online, no matter what time zone, no matter where they're at. God, we thank you that your presence is in the midst, whether they're in their car, whether they are in their living room, whether they are doing something else. We thank you, Lord, that you are right there with them along the way. And Father, I ask that you speak directly to them. Open their hearts, open their eyes to see. God, use me. Just allow me to be a vessel of your word today. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, um, does anybody love running? Like, come on, if you love running, can you put the running guy or the running emoji in the chat? Come on, you just love going for a good old run. I mean, you just enjoy running. Well, not me. I don't enjoy running, okay? I enjoy eating, and so I enjoy running so I can run off the calories that I just ate. Come on, somebody. Gotta get a good amen. And so I don't really like running. And um, I remember one summer, I went to Tennessee with my brother. My brother used to play for the University of Tennessee. Come on, go Vols. And I was a little overweight. Matter of fact, in high school, I was close to 300 pounds. That's another story for another day. But they said, hey, you know, you should go hang out with your brother up in Tennessee for the summer. And what they were trying to do, my parents were trying to get me to lose some weight. And so I was up there in Tennessee, 
And I was hanging out with my brother. Mind you, my brother is a football player, okay? So they run like morning, lunch, and they're always running. And so he was like, hey, man, come run for us. Come, come run with us. Come on, I'm going to help you out. Like, it's going to be great. I'm going to get you in shape. We're going to get healthy, and we're going to run. We're going to what? Did you just cuss at me? What are we going to do? We're going to run. Why do we need to run? You don't need to. I could just exercise and lift weights. And No, we're going to run. Okay, fine. Let's run. But my brother, my brother, and he's, he's an older brother. So, you know, older brothers love to just take things a little too far. My brother says, hey, well, you know, I, I found out there's a way that you can really lose a lot of weight really fast. And it's where you put a trash bag on underneath a hoodie. Come on, somebody. Y'all remember, y'all thought we could lose weight if you put a trash bag on and in all this heat thinking we're going to burn it. I don't know if it worked or not, but, it, but I remember running. And I had this trash bag on. Now, in Tennessee, there's hills. And in Tennessee, it also gets hot during the summer. So here I am, almost 300 pounds, with a trash bag and a hoodie on. Running in the heat in the hills of Tennessee, I was about to die. I mean, I just felt the trash bag like burning to my skin. It was melting. I thought I was going to turn into a puddle of like pudding. Like I was just like, it's hot. I'm dying. Why are we doing this? It doesn't take all of this. I'll just stop eating for the rest of my life. I don't need to run. Like what is going on? I'm like, I'm miserable. And I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And my brother's trying to encourage me, like, come on, you can do it, you can do it. I'm like, no, I can't, no, I can't. He said, yes, you can, no, I can't. And I'm running, I'm running. And then I had this amazing thought. I had an aha moment while I'm running. I said to myself, I don't want to run right now, but I can do something to keep me from running. I'm going to fake passing out. That's right, I said it. I'm running, and in my head, I'm going to act like I pass out. I'm just going to hit the ground, and I'm going to, like, roll my eyes. I'm going to start shaking. I might even start spitting. So I'm running. I'm thinking about how I'm going to do this, and I start getting slower, and I start <sighs> acting like I'm real tired, and I start rolling my eyes back, and then I see this lady standing on her porch. I'm like, yeah, this is a perfect opportunity because I know if I fall right now, my brother's going to make sure he picks me up or else they're going to call DCF, and they're going to think he's a bad brother or something like that. So I make sure I pass out right in front of this lady's house, or I fake like I pass out. So I'm running, and sure enough, I look, she's looking, I just hit the ground, hit the ground, my eyes roll back, and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, and then he picks me up, and I'm trying to fake it, I'm trying not to laugh, he's like, oh my God, you're going to be okay, and we end up walking back to the, to the house that we were staying at, he puts me on the, on the couch, gets me some water, he says, hey man, take some water, frame it, frame it, you okay, and I wake up, like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, what happened, Is, uh, oh, I'm alive, oh my, man, I thought I was, who I thought I did, I didn't know what happened, I just, I guess I passed out, and what was that? I faked like I was fatigued. But this is something that I know. That fatigue is not fake. I know without a shadow of doubt that there are some people, maybe you're watching right now, that you're fatigued. It's not fake. That you're tired. You are weary. You want to throw in the towel. You want to give up. You don't have any motivation. You don't have any energy. You don't feel like you have what it takes. And I need you to know that just may be fatigue. And it's okay because I understand that fatigue is not fake. We live in the generation to where we applaud busyness. We applaud maxing out your, we applaud just going all in. And when somebody says, oh, I'm tired, it's like, man, something's wrong with you. No, 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 no. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be fatigued because fatigue is a real thing. And we find ourselves so tired, so weak, so fatigued, no energy, no motivation. Can I read you some statistics really quick? In 2020, one in four people under the age of 30 felt like giving up. One in 10 people over the age of 30 felt like giving up. Fatigue is not fake. Fatigue is this spiritual tiredness, this tiredness that you can't sleep off, a tiredness that you can't binge watch off, a tiredness that you can't take a vacation and, and work off. The fatigue 
it can come from so many things. And maybe others, here's a few things that maybe fatigue has come from. Maybe you're tired of everything that happened in 2020. Maybe you're, you're doing way too much and you're not living your life in margin. Maybe you're not pouring into yourself, but you're constantly pouring out to other people. Maybe you're not getting proper rest. Maybe you're not eating right. Maybe you're being by yourself and you're tired. And you're tired. And fatigue has, has caused us to be tired of leading, tired of helping other people, tired of believing for something you haven't seen yet, tired of getting up and going to church, tired of being a parent. Come on, tired of giving. And you feel like no one's giving back to you. And, and, and fatigue is when you start exaggerating things and exaggerating your problems, saying things like, well, you know what? Everybody is always wanting me to do everything and nobody does anything for me. What's that? that? That may be fatigue. Fatigue is when you feel like you don't want to breathe. Fatigue is when you just forget about what you should be doing. Nothing motivates you. You lack this energy. And instead of getting out of bed, you want to stay underneath the covers. And you're fatigued. But can I tell you something today? That right where you're at, Right where you're watching, I believe that the peace of God, come on, the power of God, the strength of God can re-energize you. Come on, can, can refill you today, that God can give you some faith today over your fatigue. Can I get an amen in the chat today? That right now, God is going to restore you. God is going to rebuild you. God is going to give you faith over your fatigue. And this is what this whole Faith Over series is about. It's about detoxing of what happened in 21 and getting our faith ready for what is going to happen in 2021. Sorry, detoxing from everything that happened in 2020 to have faith for what God is going to do in 2021. And I believe that in Jesus' name, this message is going to help you today. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 20. 31, verse 25. Don't worry, they're going to put on the string because uh, I obviously don't know where it's at. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 25. And this is the prophet Jeremiah. And he's speaking a word from the Lord to the people. I want you to hear what this says. It says, I will give you rest and strength to those who are weak and tired. See, the truth is that God will give you rest. But the lie is that we find rest in the wrong things. We find rest in things that are not true rest. And if we want to find real rest, we have to flee fake rest. We have to flee fake rest. We have to flee the rest that is not real rest, the rest that's not really giving us true rest. We have to flee it. You know, I used to play football in high school. I know it may not look like it now, I know. But uh, I used to play football in high school, and I was a lineman. And so linemen, you know, they're real big, they're real mighty, you know, we block everybody. Ooh, where my lineman's at? And so Whenever we got done with doing exercises and we got done with doing conditioning and we'd be on the play, we'd be on the, the football field and, and running plays and practicing and stuff, we would get real tired as linemen and we would go to the sideline and we would bend over. We were just like this, hands on our hips, heads down low, just breathe. That's how linemen breathe. Just tired. And our coach would come over here. He's like, hey. What y'all doing over there? Get your head up. And he'll say this. I'll never forget this. He said, there ain't no air down there. There ain't no air down there. Stop bending over. There's no air down there. He'll tell us, you need to put your hands on top of your head. You need to get your chest out real big. You need to breathe in real big breaths because there ain't no air down there. 
What was he telling us? He was saying, I know you're tired. I know you need a break. But what you're going to right now isn't giving you the rest that you really need. Come on, somebody. Where you're leaning to right now, where you're going to for rest is not giving you the rest that God can give you. What you're going to, what you're trying to fill yourself with is not filling you with the real rest that comes from Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Come on, can I get an amen today? And I need you to understand that we have to flee fake rest. Come on, Netflix is not real rest. That's fake rest. The weed is not real rest. That is fake rest. The porn, come on, the bottle, the prescriptions, whatever it may be, that is fake rest. And I need you to know that there is real rest waiting for you in Jesus' name. And I come to tell you today that Jesus wants to fill you. Jesus wants to re-energize you. Jesus wants to give you rest for your weary soul. And it's available to anyone who wants it. But we have to flee fake rest. There's nothing like the rest that comes from our God. And instead of bending over, instead of having our hands on our hips, instead of having our head held low and our shoulders all droopy, we got to get to the place Come on, somebody. Our head is held high. We're looking to the sky where comes our help. Our hands are lifted. Our chest is out confident, not in our ability, but in God's ability, because that is how you find true rest. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. Check this out. It says, he gives strength to those who are tired and more power to those who are weak. Even children become tired and need rest and young people trip and fall. You know, one of the, the biggest lies I believe when I was a youth pastor, I mean, I still preach to the youth. I'm still, you know, pastoring our youth. But one of the biggest lies I used to believe when I first started pastoring youth is, oh, young people, they don't get tired. Young people don't know what stress is. Why are y'all worried about this? Y'all have no idea what it means to be tired. But that was one of the biggest lies I believed. And parents, come on, people that work with kids, I need you to hear this. Our children right now are some of the most stressed out, some of the most overworked, some of the most overwhelmed people Right now in this day and age, the things that they battle, the pressures that they face are not like the pressures that we have, may have went through. And I need every parent, I need every adult to understand that they are going through some stuff as well. And as a church, come on, as a people of God, we have to understand that we got some work to do and raise up this next generation. Come on, to empower our young people. Come on, to lift up our young people, to grow our young people, to take them by the hand and help our young people because guess what? They're tired too. That wasn't what I planned on saying, but maybe that was for somebody. <laughs> Verse 31. But the people who trust the Lord will, not maybe, not, not as a possibility, not a, not a five out of ten chance. No, they will become strong again. They will. I just love the authority of the word of God. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It will happen. They will rise up as an eagle in the sky. They will run and not need rust. The rest. They will walk and not become tired. So we need this rest from Jesus. Well, how does Jesus fill us up, Freeman? I'm glad you asked. Matthew 11, verse 28. Jesus says this, come to me, all of you who are tired and have heavy loads, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Accept my teachings and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest for your lives. The burden you ask to accept is easy and the load I give you to carry is light. We have to come to Jesus to find true rest. I remember one time I was riding around with our Gainesville campus pastor, Pastor Aaron. Dude, I love this guy. He's like my best friend. Me and him hang out all the time. And I remember um, we were getting ready to go grab some, some lunch. He said, hey, Freeman, man, you want to grab some lunch? I said, yeah, man, let's grab some lunch. He said, great. Well, can, I, can you drive? I said, well, I could, but I need some gas. 
okay, cool, no big doubt, no big problem. We'll just grab some gas as, you know, we go on the way to the restaurant. I said, no, but I really, like, need gas, like, right away. He's like, all right, cool. Like, but see, he didn't understand. Like, when I say I need gas, it means it's been, like, three days since that thing has been on E. Y'all don't judge me. Y'all know y'all do it, too. But so I knew that I probably had, because y'all started counting that. You know how, like, when the bars go away and, like, it stops telling you you need gas, all you have is, like, bars, and, like, it doesn't tell you how much further you got. Like, I start remembering the last time it said some numbers. I start counting down in my head. Well, today, this day, I lost count, okay? I just knew I needed gas. And so I said, hey, man, we can go, but I need to get to the gas station. Okay, Freeman, why are you making a big deal? See, because he didn't understand. So anyways, we get in the car. He's talking, he's talking, and he's just asking me questions. We talking about life and talking about all sorts of stuff. And we're driving, and we're on the way to the gas station. While he's talking, I'm thinking, like, all right, I got about three, was it two miles or was it one mile? I don't know, but we, we won't make it. And so I'm thinking, and I'm driving, he's talking, I'm talking back. And next thing I know, I see all the lights on my dashboard light up. I'm like, what's going on? I'm looking at the dashboard, he's still talking, and I'm, the steering wheel gets all tough. I'm pressing the gas. It's not, it's not getting any faster now. The good thing is I was already going like 45 or so, and so I'm, I'm driving, and I slowly see the speedometer start going slower and slower. Meanwhile, he's talking. He has no idea what's going on. And so it gets slower and slower. And I say, hey, hey Pastor, Fran, uh, Pastor Aaron, real, real quick. Hey, you remember I told you I needed gas? He's like, yeah, what's up? I said, well, I really need gas. And so I'll, he's like, okay, aren't you on the way to gas? I was like, yeah, but I think we just ran out of gas. Oh, Lord, Freeman, I didn't know you needed gas like that. I said, yeah, I need some gas. So here's the crazy thing. We're driving 35, 25, 15, and I see a gas station up ahead. 10, 5 miles per hour. How many of y'all know? Come on, we roll right into that gas station, right up to the pump. We filled up and we were good to go. But I need y'all to know it's the same way that when we just roll and we get into the presence of God, come on, somebody, he can fill us. He'll give us everything that we need. He'll pour into us until our cup overflows. But all you need to do is get into his presence. It doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter how hard it is. As long as you can get into his presence. You can begin to hear from him. You can begin to listen to what it is that he's saying. Come on, that's why we love when we open the church back up because people can experience the presence of God. And right now we need his presence more than any before. And we need to know that our God is healing us. We need to know that our God is with us. And so we need to get into his presence. Maybe you barely made it on YouTube today. That's okay. You are in the presence of God right where you're at. Maybe you had to pry these kids off of the computer screen so you could use it. But you are right where you need to be. And I believe that God will fulfill you. God will restore you. And God will give you rest when you get into his presence. And he'll take every weight. He will give you rest. He will give you a load that you can carry. And if you can make it into his presence, he can bring you refreshing. Check this out. Acts 3.19, it says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then the times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Real rest comes from the presence of Jesus. Here's my next point. Is that fatigue, fatigue can cause us to forget that God is not done. Fatigue can cause us to forget that what God is doing in our lives is not done. Because the truth is, God is not done. But fatigue causes us to forget that. We think, oh, well, I guess there's, this is how it's going to be for the rest of my life. And I guess there's no better day ahead. Like, like we just think that God is done. But the truth is, God is not done. Galatians 6, 9. So let us not get tired of doing what is good because just at the right time, we will, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever you have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. And so I got a little illustration that I want to help paint this picture. And what happens is these three pots represent different kind of seasons or parts of our lives and our walks with Christ. And so this first pot represents 
a brand new thing happen in our life. Maybe our, our first time we, we gave our life to Christ. We, we started serving. Come on, we got in the growth track. We're excited. We're eager. We want to do everything. Life is good. I love this church. God is so great. I love Jesus. That's this pot. We love it. The second pot represents maybe some time has gone by. And you've been serving for a little while. You've been doing some things. You've been praying. Come on, you've been believing. You, you've been wanting it all to happen. And, 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 and this represents the time in between when God spoke us a vision to when we actually see the vision. See, this first part represents the vision that we received. This third pot represents the manifestation of that vision. Oh, but this pot right here. This pot right here will get you in trouble because <laughs> this pot right here will get you so tired, will get you so fatigued, will get you so frustrated, so angry, and all you can see is what you don't see. Well, I don't see the marriage. I, I, I don't see the kids returning. Well, I don't see the child yet. I don't see what it is that God promised me. I'm, br I'm praying. Come on, I'm believing. I'm trying to serve. And all I see is this, but I don't see that. And you telling me to keep going? No, I'm tired. I, I want to see this. I'm fatigued. I, 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 I keep doing all these things. I keep serving. I, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything that I think I'm supposed to be doing right, but I don't see this yet. And now you find yourself in this fatigue because the truth of the matter is two-thirds of the process, you don't see a whole lot. Matter of fact, you may not see anything. But what you want to see will come after some time. And I know we treat time like it's a cuss word. Come on, we don't want to hear about waiting. We don't want to hear about time. We don't want to see buffer. We don't want to see nothing. We want it quick, fast, and in a hurry. But the truth of the matter is, is that after some time, all of a sudden, you'll see the vision. All of a sudden, you'll see some things happening. And see, I can preach all of a sudden. I'll get everybody excited about all of a sudden. Like, all of a sudden, it's going to happen. But the truth is, this season right here will cause some fatigue. And you'll feel like, God, is, this is all that I'm ever going to have. I guess God's done. No, he's not. Keep believing. God's not done. Come on, keep sowing. God's not done. Come on, keep praying. God is not done. Keep striving. God is not done. The things that he's promised that were going to happen are still yet to come. Don't get tired. Don't throw in the towel in the middle. Don't quit when you feel fatigued because the truth of the matter is, is the thing that God is putting inside of you just is not done yet. And many of us, we've gotten fatigued in so many areas of our lives because we did not see what we thought we were going to see yet. But the truth is, if you endure, you will win. I know you don't feel like going to church, but God's not done. You don't feel like watching online, but God's not done. You may be getting tired of looking at a, looking for a spouse, but can I tell you something? God's not done. You may be tired of trying to be a good spouse, but God's not done. Maybe you're tired of serving, but God's not done. Maybe you're tired of giving, but God's not done. And this is an area that a lot of us get weary in really easy is giving. You notice you never get tired of receiving. <laughs> we love free stuff. Come on, I, I love free stuff. My wife and I, we love, we'll take anything that's free. We love to receive. Yeah, give it here. I'll send you my email right now. Send it right away. I get a free spa session. Come on, send it my way. I get this, I get that. I can sign up for some free AirPods. Yeah, write my name down. I want free. I want to receive. We never get tired of that. But we easily get tired of giving. We get fatigued in giving. Maybe we haven't seen what we thought we were going to see yet. Maybe we feel like we're giving all of our time. We're giving all of our money and we don't see a return yet. We don't see something happening yet. But I need you to know something. The reason we're doing this Open Heaven initiative is because God's not 
done. Come on, somebody. There are 2 million people in 20 years that we are trying to reach. God is not done. There are sick people that need to be healed. God is not done. There are lost people, your friends, your family, your co-workers that need to be saved. God is not done. And this Open Heaven Initiative, that's what it's all about. It's about reaching the lost, healing the sick, seeing leaders be developed, seeing campuses being built so we can facilitate ministry. And next week, Next week, I want to make this real clear. We have our Commitment Sunday happening next week. And what is Commitment Sunday? This is an opportunity for people who call a live church their home or maybe even online. You love what God is doing and God has put it on your heart to sow towards seeing the vision of God come to pass. It's an opportunity for us to say, you know what? I want to give towards this. I want to see God move in the next 20 years. And this first two years is just the preparation for what God is going to do over the next 20 years. And so we're asking people who are part of our church just to pray, just to ask God, like, what is it that the Lord is putting on your heart to give? I know my wife and I, we're taking this season real serious because we believe that there are some, we have family and friends that we want to see come know the Lord. And we're choosing this opportunity to sow towards that 2 million in 20 years. We want to see our friends and family come to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And so we're participating. We're, we're, We're asking the Lord, Lord, what is it that you're putting on our heart to give? How can I sow towards this ministry? How can I give towards what God is doing through a live church? And next week, you're going to have the opportunity to sow towards what God is going to do over this Open Heaven initiative. And listen, if you want more information about the Open Heaven initiative, you can actually go to mylivechurch.org slash openheaven. And there's plenty of information there about what Open Heaven is, why we're doing it, what it is that we're seeking to achieve, how God is going to use this Open Heaven initiative to reach the lost and heal the sick. And how we're going to see leaders develop, how we're going to give to missions. All the information is on that website. But the main thing I want you to do right now is I want you just to ask the Lord, Lord, are you calling me to give? Are you calling me to sow? Are you speaking to me about it, about something to give towards this, this ministry and, and towards this Open Heaven initiative? And, and the thing I want you to do is I want you to be obedient to whatever it is the Lord is speaking to you. And so as I wrap up, I want to leave you with five simple keys to have faith over fatigue. It's a real, real practical you know, because I believe that we're a church that's, that's powerful, but we're also practical. Come on, we're powerful, but we're going to give you some tools that aren't just going to, you know, we, we, we don't want to get you excited. Come on, we want to get your emotions, but we also want you to leave out of here knowing what to do. So I got some practical tools for you, okay? The first one is this, is, is mastering your morning. You got to master your morning. Master your morning. Mark 1.35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Y'all, if Jesus went away to be alone and to be with the Father, don't y'all think we should too? <laughs> and, and listen, I know for me the best time is in the morning. And, and for you, it may be nighttime. That's okay. The biggest thing is that you need to know what's best for you. You need to have a time of the day that works best for you, for you can, you can get into this solitude place, this place of quietness, this place of stillness, this place where you can hear from the Lord. You don't have distractions. You don't, you don't have the email buzzing. You don't have the kids begging. You don't have the, the, the stuff going on. You hear stuff going on outside, and, and maybe you just need to get to this place where you can spend time with the Lord and master your morning. What I mean by that is asking the Lord, what is it that you want me to accomplish today? How can I serve you, God? And many of us, many of us, we just need to start asking this question in the morning. God, what is it that you want me to accomplish today? What what three things do you want me to accomplish today? I began doing this. It's been life-changing because here's the thing. If we find three things to accomplish and we do those great, 
you'll get to the end of your day and be like, man, I accomplished something. Instead of trying to accomplish 30 things and do a good job, how about you accomplish three things and do a great job? How many of y'all know good is the enemy to great? And some of us, we just need to get into this place of solitude where we're allowing God to create margin in our life and speak to us about what it is that he wants us to do. The second practical tip is this. Have a rhythm of rest. Luke 5, 14 through 6, or Luke 5, 16 says this, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Often he did this. Often. What is your rhythm of rest? How often do you find rest? And maybe you're looking for some. I got a few that maybe you could consider. There's something that, you know, I've applied and other leaders of pastor here, pastors here at this church, we apply and it's been a great benefit. The first one is, is divert daily. That means every day, every day, try and make sure you have an opportunity that you divert, you get away, you, you, you get into this solitude place, try your best to do it every single day. Maybe it's the first 15 for you. Maybe it's when you get home and, you know, you just find something that brings you rest. You do it daily. The second is withdraw weekly. That means every week you should have at least one off day to where you are spending time just restoring your soul, just spending time with the Lord, spending time in worship, spending time in prayer, spending time doing whatever it is that restores your soul and resting. You know, when God got done building everything in six days, he rested on the seventh day. Read it over in Genesis. And here's a question for you. If God needed to rest, what makes you think you don't? And and I'm not trying to condemn you because I was there as well. I thought that I could do more in seven days more than what God can do in six days. But the truth of the matter is when you understand that your rest day is actually a form of worship because you're saying, God, I trust you. I know that you can do more in me in six days than I can do in seven days. You're worshiping God. You're saying, hey, God, I want to trust you by giving God an opportunity to work in your life. How often are you taking a, I believe every single person, no matter what you do for work, you should have at least one off day a week. And the third one is annually, abandon annually. That's where you try and plan a vacation. You try and get away. You try and do something. You know, it doesn't have to be super expensive. You can do a staycation if you have to. Come on, somebody, just stay at home and, and just rest. Annually, you should have, maybe I don't, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, your, your God. I don't want to tell you what you need to do, but I want you to ask God, like, how long is it? Is it a day? Is it three days? Is it a week? I don't know. How often do you need to just annually just get away? But the bottom line is this. It's not about working harder, but surrendering more. It's about getting to this place that we have margin and we're not trying to go, 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 go and do all these things. And some of us, we're just doing way too much. and You need to rest. The third tip, third tip is keep it fresh. It means maybe you need to switch up how you spend time with God. Maybe start using some devotionals or reading a book during your quiet time. Or maybe start journaling. You know, maybe you do a lot of praying. You do a lot of talking. But how long have you just sat and listened and started writing it down? Maybe just switch it up. Maybe find a Bible version that you can actually understand. Come on, somebody. And the fourth one is this. Find friends who fan your flames. In other words, find somebody that boosts you up. Come on, you need a friend like, that's my best friend, that's my best friend, you bet, right? You need somebody that's fanning your flames, somebody that's, that's getting you hype. You need a hype crew. You need somebody to fan your flames. Timothy and Paul had this type of relationship where Paul would fan Timothy's flames. Paul would remind Timothy how good he is, how called he is, how he can do things. The question I have for us is how many of those people do we have in our lives? Check this out, 2 Timothy 1.6. For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God which is in you through laying on of my hands. And what Paul is saying, Timothy, I want you to know that your embers may be getting a little weak. The flame may be going out, but can I fan that flame a little bit? Can I tell you, man, you're more gifted than you thought that you were? Can I tell you that there's more on the inside of you, that your best days are ahead of you? We need people in our corner that are fanning our flames, that are boosting us up, that are helping us walk through life, being in our corner, cheering us on. And that's why we have small groups here. We just launched them a few weeks ago. And I need everyone to know that there is a small group for you so that you can have people in your corner doing life with you, fanning your flame. And the last one is this. Last tip is remember your why. 
remember your why. Philippians 1.6 has been a verse that I've been meditating on over the last few weeks. Um, and it's been speaking to me in so many ways. Remember your why. Philippians 1.6 says, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. What is the good work that Jesus has begun in you? What is your why? What is it that the Lord last spoke to you to do? What is it that God has put on the inside of you? What is your why? Because here's what I know, is that people don't quit because of what they do. They quit when they forget why they do what they do. And I want you to remember, why are you doing what God called you to do? Because he put it in your heart to do it. Don't forget your why. Your why will help you get through fatigue. Your why will give you faith. Your why will remind you of the vision of God that he put into your life so that you can continue to walk in faith over fatigue. But you know, it starts with having a relationship with Jesus. Many of you, your why has not been set yet because your relationship with Jesus is not there yet. And maybe that's you and you're watching here today. You're saying, Freeman, I want a relationship with Jesus. Come on, I want to pray with you right where you're at. Come on, I want you to pause for a moment. Stop what you're doing if you can. And I want you to know that this is a holy moment and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now saying, son, daughter, you're loved, you're called, you're chosen. I want you to come home today. And if that is you and you want to put your faith in Jesus, come on, I want to pray with you really quick. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every single person that's watching today. I thank you, Lord, that hearts are turning towards you. People are coming back to you. They're remembering who they are in you. And Father, I thank you right now that you're calling the sons and daughters home, the lost sons and daughters. God, they're coming back home today. And Father, right now, I pray that you move in hearts all around the world, all different time zones, God, that people are saying right now, I want to give my heart back to Jesus. I want a why that's in my heart that's bigger than anything in the world. And if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer to me. Say, dear God, I confess I am a sinner and I am in need of a savior. And right now I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, forgive me my sins and make me right with him. In Jesus name, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together? Put some clapping emojis for some people that prayed that prayer today. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want you to know you are in the family of God. Come on, your sins are forgiven. You are a child of God and we want to celebrate you. We want to help you. And listen, if that was you, can you text the word save to the number below and we're going to connect with you. We're going to pray with you and help you take your next steps in Jesus. Hey, we hope you enjoyed today. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see y'all next time. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Alive Online today. I pray that message was a blessing to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit just takes something from it. He illuminates it to where your life will never be the same again. If that's the case, make sure you let us know how your life was impacted and changed because of the message on today. We would love for you to share this content. You know, we have a saying in Alive Church that one invite can change a life. We also believe that one share can change a life. I mean, get your share on. God will use your share as a lifeline to reach people around the world. All right. If you like what we're doing here, we would love for you to be a part of our online family. You can do that by hitting subscribe. We want you to be the first to grab hold of all new messages and all new content as they are released. You know, the Bible says that when we give, it'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And one of the greatest ways that you can make a difference and change lives is by giving. And so if you would like to sow to the ministry of Alive Church, hit the button below. And I know that God will bless you and you'll also be a blessing to other people. We love you and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.